Hi everyone and welcome to another Gaffer and Gear. Today we're having a look at the Aladdin All-in-One, which is a bicolor light, plus it's an RGB light, all built into one. So why didn't I call it an RGBWW light? Well, because it isn't. All right, so let's have a talk about what you get. Uh, this system costs uh, 2,000 Australian dollars. And uh, just one thing I want to point out, this is the non-DMX version, okay? So I just want to point that out in case anybody asks me questions about the DMX. I have no idea. Okay, so you get the bag, you get the, uh, the panel itself, of course. You also get a, uh, a bag for the panel. Now, anybody who owns Aladdin lights, I own two 350s. Um, you're a fan of these bags. They uh, mag magnetically seal. They're a, a heck of a lot stronger than they look. They're great, uh, great for protecting the, uh, the light. Now you get a soft box, okay? You get another bag. So this bag, uh, basically a V-lock battery can fit in this bag. So it magnetically unlocks, so you can put a battery in there. And the driver, which is attached to the, um, to the light, also fits in the bag. So that's very handy for, um, for portability. Okay, you get the exoskeleton, which we'll go through in a sec. You get a D-tap adapter, so you can run the system off batteries. You get uh, an extension lead to go in between the, uh, the, the light itself and the power supply. Okay, so uh, it ships with a power supply. You also get um, a uh, carry strap for, for this bag. Um, yeah, whoop de doo uh, And you also get uh, a spigot and a shoe mount. Okay, so you're probably thinking, why, why would you want a shoe mount? Well. This thing is actually light enough to stick on top of a camera, but uh, one thing to consider it at full power, it, it is drawing 70 watts. All right, so let's run through how to assemble this to put on a light stand. Okay, so basically you've got your exoskeleton, so this spreads out, and these end rubber feet go into the corners of the mat. So you literally just stick it in like that and flex it. And now that's ready to stick on your light stand. Now you've also got these um, extendable bits here. And that is for your softbox. Okay, so your softbox literally goes over those. Now if you're worried about light leaking out the back, you can take the additional bit of time to Velcro it down. Now let's say you want to run this thing off batteries. It's really straightforward because the controller's already built onto the back. You've got the driver, which uh, you can mount onto the stand or anywhere at all. It's pretty lightweight, which is already pre-attached. All you need is your D-tap adapter. That plugs into your battery, of course. and you're off and running. Now let's say you want to be ultra portable. Put your V-Lock battery into the bag. Put the driver into the pouch. Connect that to the V-Lock battery. This mounts onto your stand, and you're ready to go. All right, so let's give you a very quick rundown of the unit's capabilities. It is mobile phone app controllable. It is dimmable in 1% increments. It is color tunable from 2,850 Kelvin right up to 6,100 degrees Kelvin. The unit has plus and minus green correction via phone app only. Now to add to that, the unit also contains an RGB light. So let's get into how to operate it. All right, so let's go through operating this thing off the controls on the back. Now remember in the intro, I said that this is a bicolor light and an RGB light, but it's not an RGBWW light. Well, that's gonna make a lot of sense in a sec. Okay, so uh, in the center here, we've got a mode selector button. And that mode selector button uh, selects whether you're using white light, which is the bicolor light, 
or RGB, your colored light, okay? So basically you press that and uh, underneath uh, the lights indicate whether you're in RGB or white, okay? So we've got white selected. Now the, uh, the other four buttons are basically your dimmer controls, okay? So you've got um, uh, plus or minus uh, for, your, for your dimming or your intensity. And on the other side, you've got plus or minus for your color. Okay, so let's uh, turn it up. So let's uh, fire up the dimmer. Now at the moment, it's in daylight. If we want to change it to tungsten, we just go to color and dial, uh, hit the minus button and scroll down to tungsten. Okay, so press uh, the plus button and we go back up to daylight. Now there is nothing on the back here to, to tell you what CCT or color temperature that you're dialing in. Okay, but trust me, that's not that big a deal if you're not used to it. For the first 10 years that GAF has had uh, bicolor lights, we didn't have anything on the back to indicate, we just eyeballed it. The, the eye is actually quite good, uh, quite a good color spectrometer when it comes to basically dialing in your CCT. Not so much with plus or minus green, but with dialing in your CCT, it's pretty good. So let's, uh, let's go back down to tungsten. Okay, now let's have a look at the RGB mode. But before we switch to RGB mode, I'll just turn off the white light mode. So I'll just uh, dial white all the way down to nothing. Okay, press the mode selector, go over to RGB, and let's dial this all the way up. Okay, now with your plus or minus controls, uh, whichever way you're going, plus or minus, it scrolls all the way through back to red. So at the moment, it's on primary red. If I press the minus button, it'll scroll all the way around all the color circle and back to red. So let's have a look. Okay, now if I want finer control, basically you just tap the buttons. So let's get an amber, I really like ambers. Let's see if we can find like, a, like an amber somewhere. Uh, let's go a bit more, that's a nice amber. Now, let's say we want to desaturate this color. Okay, so remember again, it's a bicolor light and an RGB light. If we want to desaturate it, we have to add the white light. Okay, so what we do is select using the mode button, the white light mode. So now we're going to turn on the white lights. Okay, and then we basically turn those up, add white light to desaturate. Okay, now that's a little bit complex, but this system does have one advantage over something like say a sky panel. So I'll just show you what that advantage is. So um, basically I'll turn, um, I'll turn the white channel or the white light all the way up. You can select uh, what you're desaturating to. So I can have uh, tungsten or, or daylight, at the moment it's in daylight, or I can desaturate to tungsten. So I can select uh, yeah, what, what color white I want to desaturate to. Okay, so let's say we wanna to go to that. Let's dim that down. Okay, so that's our, our RGB light that's running at the moment with no white, and then we can add white to desaturate. Okay, now let's get into the negatives of this system. So if you're a gaffer, your head's probably spinning going, oh my God. Okay, let's get into the negatives of this system. Let's say you really like the color that we've got there. You really like the mix of RGB and white. Okay, and you say, Andrew, I really like it, but can you dim it 10%? Okay, so we've got two separate lights, we want to dim them both 10%. Um, how do we do that? Well, as best I can guess, um, let's select the white and dim it 10, press the button 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Let's select RGB now and press the dimmer button 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That's as best as I can guess how to do it. Now here's the next disadvantage with this system. Um, let's say you really, really like that color, you're the cinematographer, you really love that, and you say, Andrew, can you uh, put this color into the other Aladdins? Here's the problem, I've got no display info telling me you know, what color vector I'm on, how much saturation I've got, I've got no information. So I pretty much have to eyeball it. Now I've just noticed one more minor issue with the manual controls. There's no on off switch. So uh, if you want to turn it off, you've basically got to disconnect the battery. Now, before we get into talking about the app control, one thing I'd like to point out that is a strength of this unit is it does generate very good yellows. So if you've um, ever tried to generate yellows using RGB lights, it is quite difficult. So, so that is a strength of this unit. 
Um, okay, so let's get into the app control. So it has apps for iOS and for Android. Uh, both apps are very stable, I've used them both. And um, the only real difference is in the color wheels. So the color wheel on the Android desaturates to the center of the wheel, whereas um, on the, the Apple software, you've got a uh, scroll bar down the bottom that does your desaturation. One, one strength that this app has over other apps is you can see it's got the full identification number of the light. So uh, when you select that light, uh, any previous settings that you had for that light, it will apply those settings to that light with absolute confidence that that is the correct light. So uh, the last time I used this, I had that uh, the RGB dial to green. So let's check that that works. So uh, select the light, it's connecting and bang, it's, it's gone to its previous settings. So that, that really is a, a strength of this software. Um, a lot of other software doesn't do that. Now, uh, the first thing that comes up is motion. So you can, um, basically with the motion controller, you can select um, what it is you're changing. And uh, so basically, say you've got the dimmer set and you're using a mobile phone, it's a bit stupid with this thing, but you're using a mobile phone. You can tilt your hand up and down and it adjusts the brightness of the light. So you can get really sort of fine tune adjustments. So that's, um, that's super handy. Uh, for somebody like me who's got really bad blood circulation and, and struggles to use um, uh, struggles to use uh, touch screens. Now another thing I like about the app, um, and this is in terms of how this light works, is you've got resets. So you can reset your bicolor or your white mode and you can reset your, uh, your RGB mode. So I'm just going to reset the RGB mode. So press that, everything goes to zero values in RGB. So let's start off by having a look at bicolor. So let's, uh, let's fire up the intensity. Now, one advantage you've got with the app over the manual control is we now have uh, indications of what we're dialing in. So we can see our, our CCT. Um, we'll talk about how accurate the CCT is later in the video. Okay, the next thing you've probably noticed uh, down the bottom is um, plus minus green on the next, uh, the next uh, line. Now, I've done a bit of testing with this, and uh, this is to scale. So if we go all the way up to, to 100, so plus 100, that is the equivalent of a full green, and down here is the uh, equivalent of a, uh, a, a full uh, minus green or a full magenta. Okay, so uh, things I don't like about this, uh, about the plus minus green, is, uh, again, I keep saying this, this is a bicolor light and an RGB light, and it's not properly integrated. Um, if you uh, decide to drop your intensity on your light, uh, on, 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 your, on, your, on your white levels, the green being you know, basically a separate part of the system, being on the RGB side, doesn't attach to it and follow. So for example, if I dim down this intensity, you can see that the, the white intensity drops, but the green intensity stays the same. So that's, um, um, that's an easy trap to fall into. Now, you can adjust both together by using the master controller. Okay, so they both tie in together using the master controller, but where this is a massive trap is if you're using this on a mobile phone, you can't see the master display until you scroll down. So I reckon a lot of people would, um, would be using the system, dial in their plus minus green, and then uh, be unaware that there's a master controller further down and change their intensity. And if, if they're making small changes, they might, may not visually see that they're changing their, their, hue, uh, their hue mix. Now, um, the next thing um, I've got to say I don't really like about the plus minus green is because it's not tied into the white side, it's, it's again two separate systems. If you go to uh, color mode and then uh, dial in a, uh, a color, um, it's, uh, you know, that's completely changed. Um, your plus minus green value. So um, that's, a, that's a bit of a negative. Now, before we go and have a look at the color mode, something to point out is you can save your settings and recall them, and it does save both the white settings and the RGB settings. So look, before we get into the color mode, I'll just reset the whites, uh, select the color, and um, here we go, we've got a color wheel. So that looks, uh, that looks pretty groovy. Um, so like pretty much every other color wheel on the market, you sort of get the idea of how it works. Now, um, let's have a look at desaturation. So you can uh, desaturate on a bar down here. Um, I'll just uh, use the uh, desaturator here to show. It actually doesn't mix any white light in. It's desaturating using the RGB. So to make it a bit more clear, let's, let's just pick another color. Okay, now watch the RGB values. 
up top as they change as I slide around. Now, when I desaturate, so we've got a, a green there, when I desaturate, um, see it mixes the other colors in as it desaturates. So it's just using RGB to desaturate. Now the problem with desaturating using RGB, that works perfectly fine if you've got full spectrum light, like say tungsten lights that are gelled, but it doesn't work with, uh, with LED. So if you look at the, uh, the light behind us, it's not white. Okay, however, you can very cleverly desaturate using this software. So basically set uh, everything at full desaturation or basically hit your reset, whichever's fastest. Select your color that you want. So let's go, uh, let's go pink, why not? Okay, let's go pink. Now, um, here's the thing. You wanna desaturate it, you can desaturate it using the white light. So we switch back to white light mode. Now here's where this unit actually has advantages over say something like a sky panel, is we can select the, um, the, the Kelvin point to which we want to desaturate to. So let's desaturate to say 4000, close enough, 4001. Okay, now I just dial in my intensity and that desaturates. So let's have a look, okay. So you can actually desaturate um, uh, to a, a predetermined Kelvin. So that's really cool. Now, unlike manual control, where it was an absolute nightmare to dim the setting that you want, you've got the master here, okay? So it does work as a, it, it's a little bit of a workaround, but it does work as a good, um, as a good uh, HSI mode. Plus you can select your base Kelvin to desaturate to. So that is a bit of a strength of the system. Now there is one trap to look out for. Now because, again, I keep saying this, it's two separate systems, uh, bicolor and RGB, just chucked into one panel. If I go to make a change to my plus minus green, which is on the RGB side, I lose the color we just dialed in. So have a look. The next thing we'll have a look at in the app is the filters library. So you've got uh, quite a few filters to select from. Um, now, interestingly enough, they're called filters, not gels and they don't tie into any, um, say, Lee or Roscoe patterns, okay? So basically they're just colors. So I was sort of wondering why that was um, initially. I thought maybe they didn't want to pay royalties, um, but uh, having had a play with it, uh, all of the colors here are basically generated using RGB only. So again, separate RGB to, to white. Um, so for example, the deep purple, the pink rose, magenta, whatever you click, it's not, uh, say, like in other lights where you've got a, um, a representation of a gel over a certain colour light. So, for example, a gel over a tungsten light or a gel put over a daylight balance light. This is pretty much just straight colours. So it's, it's not applied to any CCT value. Now, here's the downside uh, to this sort of separate systems. Let's, uh, let's select, say, uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's go dark pink. All right, now let's say we want to um, apply a, a base color to that. Well, we go to our bicolor menu. Now we can select the base color we want to put in. So let's say uh, 5,600 or thereabouts. Here's the problem. As soon as we start dialing in white light, we desaturate the RGB side. So here we go, we, we're now desaturating the color. So it's not really um, a gels menu, um, um, for example. It, it's basically um, a quick selection of, of useful colors. So if you think of it as a gels library, you'll be uh, a little bit disappointed. But you know, if you're trying to find a, a funky color to throw onto a background, you know, get a bit of a, a I suppose, a K-pop vibe going on, um, then it's um, a perfectly fine, perfectly good system. Now sticking with the, um, the gels uh, for a second, there is something I want to show you because even though the workflow is a little bit disjointed with this, uh, this software, you can have a bit of creativity with it. So let's say, let's pick say sunset red. All right, now um, let's say you want to tune that, okay? So you can go to the, uh, the color menu. That's the values for your sunset red, okay? So uh, you might want to add a little bit of green to that, I don't know, or, or whatever. You can tune it a little bit, all right? So you can tune it up. And let's say you want to desaturate it, well then you can go to your, uh, to your bicolor, select a base Kelvin you want to desaturate it with, and then start desaturating it. So you know, there, there is quite a bit of, um, uh, of play in the system once you get the hang of it. Uh, initially, it does seem very disjointed because uh, again, it is two separate systems chucked into one. Now the last thing to talk about in the software 
is the effects menu. But before we get into the effects menu, I'm gonna give you a tip because um, when I first got this system, I couldn't figure out what the hell was wrong with it. Like I'd go into police lights and it was, it was flashing like purple and green. Um, you know, I had green fire. I couldn't figure out what was going wrong. So before you go into your effects menu, here's my advice. Go to your buy color menu, press reset. Go to your uh, color menu, press reset. Because any values that are in these, um, in these menus get carried across to the effects menu. Okay, so let's have a look uh, at the effects menu. So you've got, um, you got quite a few to, to choose from. I'm not going to go through them all because um, basically I don't really, I'm not a huge fan of, of in-light effects, uh, really. Let's have a look at cop car. Well, you know, pretty much it's what you'd expect, for example. Now, when I, again, when I first used that, it was doing funky colors. Um, now you can change, yeah, you can change the speed that it goes, all sorts of, all sorts of things. So, um, you know, basically it's, it's got pretty much the effects that everyone else has got. Now in terms of the effects, um, guess what I'm going to say? Well, you've guessed it. The effects are either RGB or bicolor. They're not mixing them together. They're two separate systems again, put into one light. But here's, here's one thing I do like. So let's, uh, fire. Uh, I reckon the fire is one of the best fire effects I've seen in, in an LED light. It is missing something though, because at the moment the fire effect is only using uh, the bicolor. What I found makes a really nice fire effect is go to the, uh, the color menu, right, and dial in some, um, some amber, okay. That, uh, that puts a nice sort of base amber in into the flicker. So yeah, the fire effect, uh, the fire effect pretty much rocks. Um, I think that's one of the best fire effects I've seen, but in terms of all the other effects, well, they're pretty much the same as everybody else's. Now, I almost forgot to put this in. Okay, so I've, on the mobile phone, I've got the app hooked up. It takes uh, about a second. Now, the 3D motion thing, it took me forever to figure out how this thing works, right? I couldn't get it to do anything because there's no instructions. So basically, um, you've got things you can select. Uh, once you've selected what it is, you put your thumb onto the 3D, okay? So that sort of unlocks it. You put your thumb onto the 3D. I've got intensity selected, okay? Now I can move my arm up and down and select the intensity. Okay, so let's select Kelvin, all right? Let's select Kelvin. This is fun. Let's select Kelvin, okay? Now, you might be thinking, well, what's the point in that? I love this because I've got um, very bad uh, blood circulation in my fingertips. So sometimes I can't get a touch screen to work. I can't do the fine movements with my thumb. Whereas this, you can just extend your arm all right, and you get more, um, uh, more control, more finer control. You have it close to you, you can do fast. Again, extend your arm, finer control. So that's, that's really cool, I, I, that's clever. Now, just for giggles, I've put this thing into a color chase uh, as we go through our technical data. So this is the boring part of the video. Okay, so let's talk about Lux first. So at three meters, at 3,200 Kelvin, this thing is spinning out 148 Lux. At 4,300 Kelvin in your mid-range, this is spinning out 152 Lux. And at 5,600 Kelvin, it is spinning out 145 Lux. Now, after a year of doing gaffer and gear, I thought it was about time I got professional. So uh, my UPR Tech spectrometer, I sent that uh, back to UPR Tech to get the frequency reader fixed. So that cost me about 500 um, US dollars, but that's now working. So now we can see if lights are truly flicker free or not. So this light is spitting out 25.5 kilohertz. So that means it's pulsing 25 and a half thousand times a second. So yes, it's flicker free. So what does that actually mean? Well, in my experience, uh, 24 to 25 kilohertz means that uh, with a global shutter, you are totally flicker free. So you could be shooting on a Phantom and you won't get flicker out of this. Um, you won't get much light level, but you won't get flicker. If you're shooting on a camera with a very, very slow rolling shutter, there is very little chance that you're going to get flicker at any frame rate or any shutter speed. Very little chance, but there is still a slight possibility I have come across it. Now let's talk about CCT and Kelvin accuracy. So these results are for me taking readings at 100 degree Kelvin increments. Okay, so I'm going to split this into three sections. So below 4000 degrees Kelvin, this unit dials in a color with 125 Kelvin accuracy on average. 
in your mid range, which is four to 5,000 Kelvin, uh, the accuracy drops to an average of 362 Kelvin. And in your upper Kelvins, that's anything above 5,000 Kelvin, the accuracy is on average 245 Kelvin. Okay, so how does this thing go in terms of its RGB? Okay, so red, which should be zero degrees on the color vector, was coming in at one degree. Now to give you a reference point, that's better than an RE sky panel. Now it's green emitter, which should be 120 degrees, was coming smack in at 120 degrees. Now to give you a reference, that's the same as the RE sky panel. Now it's blue was also smack on correct at 240 degrees on the color vector, which again is equal to an RE sky panel. Now let's talk about its secondary colors, which of course is mixing two primary colors together. And this is where the current generation of RGB LED lights don't hold up too well. So cyan, which should be 180 degrees, was coming in at 209 degrees. This unit in, in that regard is less accurate than an RE sky panel. It's magenta, which should be 300 degrees, was coming in at 293 degrees, which is more accurate than an RE sky panel. And it's yellows, which should be 60 degrees, was coming in at 38 degrees. That sounds pretty bad, but it's actually the same as an RE sky panel. Now, usually I do tests with desaturation to see how accurately it targets its desaturation, but because this unit doesn't have any way, including the phone app, of accurately adjusting a desaturation level, I've got nothing to target against. Okay, so let's talk about the purity of whites. Now, as I've said a lot of times in the video, this is not an RGB WW light, it's a bicolor light and an RGB light. So what does that mean in terms of the purity of whites? Well, it's not using any of its color emitters to help it generate a more pure white like an RGB WW light would. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, at 3,200 degrees Kelvin, this unit is coming in pink. So it's um, 0.0048 DUV under the Planckian curve which means if you were using old school correction gels, you'd need something between a one eighth and a one quarter correction. Now, of course you can use the uh, RGB emitters to then correct that. Now at 4,300 degrees Kelvin, this unit is 55 DUV increments underneath the Planckian curve, which means it's pretty close to a one quarter correction out. You can of course use plus minus green settings in the phone app to adjust for that. And at 5,600 degrees Kelvin, this unit is 24 increments under the Planckian curve with a DUV score of 0.0024, which means you'd need roughly a 1 8 correction gel in old terms, but of course you can use the phone app to correct. Now let's talk about color rendering. I took my color readings at 100 Kelvin increments. So let's start off with TLCI first. Okay, the average TLCI score for this unit is 97%. Its highest score was 98% and its lowest score was 96%. Now let's talk about uh, TN30 color vector testing. The average score for this was a very healthy 94.3%. The high score was 95% and the lowest score was 94%, which is uh, surprisingly good color rendering scores. So let's have a closer look at our more common Kelvin. So when you dial in 3,200 degrees Kelvin, you get 3,135. Here is the spectrum analysis. Now here are the individual CRI scores. There are a few 87s in there and an 89, but everything else is above 90. And here is the color vector test. There is a bit of oversaturation, but pretty much everything lines up correctly. There's not much color skewing at all. Now, when I dialed in 4,300 degrees Kelvin, I got 3,961. Here's the spectrum graph. Here are the individual CRI scores. Now, as you can see, R9 is quite low at 76.1. There are quite a few scores there below 90. The color vector, however, paints a happier picture. Everything seems to line up pretty well, with the exception of some oversaturation. Now, when I targeted 5,600 degrees Kelvin, I got 5,385. This is the color spectrum analysis. It's pretty typical of a daylight bicolor LED. 
and here are the individual CRI scores. R9 is coming in at a low 76.3. There are quite a few scores there in the 80s, but the majority of them are in the 90s. And with the exception of a little bit of oversaturation, the color vector test indicates it all as well. Okay, so before we go, a very big thank you to Lemac Australia, who are the distributor of this, for letting me borrow it. So um, very big thank you to them. Now, that's the Aladdin uh, all-in-one. They also have an all-in-two, which is basically one foot by two foot, so twice the size. This has been a very interesting unit to, to have. So I've had this uh, in the workshop here for about three weeks, and a lot of people have come in and looked at it. And people either really, really love it and are super excited by it, or they just don't like it at all. It's, it's really got that bigger divide. Now, the people who really, really like it, what they can't get over is, that's all you need um, to run it off a V-Lock battery. That's it. You want to uh, connect it to a stand or to the, or have the softbox mounted, you just need that as well. What super excites people about it is, they can fit that in their camera kit, you know, in their camera case, or in the space that a, a normal one by one would take up, you can fit three of these and you know, they're by color and you're getting RGB. Uh, the people who don't like it um, are people like myself, gaffers. Um, one thing I don't like about it is um, the fact the controller's on the back. Now, when a gaffer buys a, a small light like this, it's so that we can mount it to, the, to a wall or mount it to a ceiling or stick it in a fridge or, or something like that. And when you do that, you can't get to the controls because they're on the back. But interest, interestingly enough, the people who really love this love the fact the controller's on the back because when it's at stand height, you can operate it easy. There's less things to connect. Um, so look, opinions really are torn on it. Um, I personally um, don't like it that much. I don't like the way uh, the, the, the bike color and the, um, and the RGB integrate. Um, but hey, that's just me. Um, I'm Andrew Locke. See you on the next episode of Gaffering Gear.